In this video we're going to take a look, a closer look at SAS macro variables. So we saw in the previous video um, how how the SAS how SAS macros were handled. They were sent to the um, word scanner and um, what the word scanner did was if it found any tokens it would, um, sorry, if it found any uh, any um, tokens, yes, so, so the percentage signs or ampersands it would send that to the macro compiler where the macro compiler would resolve any of those and it would resolve those by looking them up inside what's called a macro symbol table and that's basically where we store our macro variables so what we're just going to look at now is uh, three statements um, the first is the percent let statement which allows us to pass a macro variable directly um, to the macro symbol table in other words it doesn't actually have to be within a macro so we do that with percentage let and we say spend equals 400 and let's do another one, so percentage let trips equals 500 so all that does is um, when I compile that it sends um, spend and trips to as macro variables to the macro symbol table so I can, I can now use that so I can create another macro percent macro shopping and this will be very similar to the previous um, macro except we won't um, call in variables directly to it. So I'm going to create data jjj after shopping and I want to keep the name, the old savings or the new savings and we're going to set mat008.jjj and we're going to have old savings equals savings in pounds and new savings equals savings in pounds minus ampersand trips multiplied by ampersand spend and so this when it goes to the word scanner will go to the macro compiler and it will resolve to these global macro variables that we've created and they're global because they're created outside of a macro Um, the run statement and then percentage macro end and then I can just call shopping so I'll just run these two statements together go to libraries to work library JGG after oop little error there so let's go variable in pounds is uninitialized ah it's because I had a minus as opposed to an ampersand there so I was unhappy I thought I was um, taking one thing away from another, so let me try that again. And that's better. Okay, so percentage let just lets you put macro variables straight to the um, the macro symbol table. Right, uh, percentage put allows you to see the value of a macro variable. So percentage put, and I can write ampersand spend, and that will just write to the log the value of ampersand spend. Yeah, four four hundred there. Sorry, I, was, I thought that was a line number. I was a bit lost of four hundred there. You can also add in some text. You can say the spend is. And now, if we compile that, the spend is four hundred. Okay, so that percentage put allows you to check um, the value of a, a macro variable. You can uh, so we can change that. We can say, what if that's five hundred, one hundred and fifty run that and then if we rerun this the spend is 150 okay um, we can also do use percentage put to see first of all all the macro variables now this one is to be used with caution but let me show you what this does if we run that let me just open up my log we have a whole bunch of automatic macro variables and these are all things that are just in SAS and then we have the global macro variables and they're, they're the ones we've given to SAS okay there's a quicker way of viewing that we can just do percentage put and global so if I submit that that gives us the global variables I could also put local in there to 
to see any local macro variables, but we haven't defined any uh, in this video, so we won't worry about that for now. Right, the uh, oh, I should have probably brought that back up. The um, the next thing we're going to see in this in this video is uh, a very important aspect, and it's when resolving multiple ampersands. So we're just going to do this through a little exercise. Um, but but before we do that, first of all, why multiple ampersands? Um, this is multiple ampersands can be used basically to allow the value of a macro variable to become another macro variable reference, and this can be very powerful. Now we've seen um, two tokens so far. We've seen ampersand and we've seen so ampersand and we've seen percentage. So these are the two tokens we've seen that are picked up by the word scanner. But importantly, there's another token which is the double ampersand. The double ampersand is a token in its own right that resolves to a single ampersand. So let's take a look at that. So this um, here's an example here. If I create a, vari a macro variable, variable 1, and I call it time, and I create another macro variable, code, and call it variable 1, and then if I put to the log uh, ampersand ampersand code in the hope of getting time, well this is what happens. Ampersand ampersand code goes to the word scanner, and the word scanner finds the two tokens. The first token is double ampersand, and the second token is just the word code. The uh, Going through the macro compiler, the double ampersand resolves to a single ampersand, and code resolves to code. The second, this then goes through the word scanner, which recognizes another ampersand, and that ampersand simply resolves then to variable one. So that outputs variable one. So let's uh, let's try that. So percentage let variable one equals time. Percentage let code equals variable one, and percentage put ampersand ampersand code. So if I run that, we do indeed get variable 1. Now we'll see why, but the way to get what we want is actually, I'll just put in here, to have three ampersands. And so now what will happen is we have the first token is the double ampersand and the second token is the ampersand code. So let's first of all see that that works. We do and get time indeed get times what we want. But if we take a look at this, let me just go through this slide here, and we have the exact same definition, and it's just ampersand, ampersand, ampersand code. So the macro compiler reads the double ampersand as a single token, and the second ampersand as another token. And when that's passed through, the double ampersand resolves to a single ampersand, and the second ampersand resolves to variable 1, which then gives you a new macro variable, ampersand variable 1. And then when that is then compiled, uh, resolved, it becomes time. Now this might seem a bit uh, bizarre, but actually it's it's extremely logical, and it's a uh, it's actually a very powerful piece of code. Um, generally speaking, you'll never need more than three ampersands, um, but obviously if you don't have enough and you're not getting what you want, I recommend having a few more. So in this video, we've just taken a closer look at uh, at macro variables, and in particular, resol resolving multiple ampersands.